Hello, this is Ray Motor, and welcome to this edition of the Hot Seat. Joining me today is Sunil from Neo Arch. Sunil, welcome to the, I think this is your third one? That's right. Man, you must like the pain, right? This is your third Hot Seat. I love talking to you, Ray. Well, congrats, congrats. Listen, there's a lot of news that have happened regarding Nokia, Neo Arch, and all these other things. Give us an update on what's going on with that. Sure. So since the last time we met, yeah. um, it's been a uh, Fantastic uh, in terms of nuage, right. more customers, uh, more validation, more use cases, right. more SDN modernization and network automation projects that we are participating in. In other words, a lot more to do. Right. It's exciting times. Right. Uh, we have now over 60 plus customers that are deployed nice. in production, cloud service providers, uh, service providers as in telcos, mm -hmm. as well as la very large enterprises. Right. This in just two years in the market nice. uh, is a fantastic validation of our technology right. uh, and our approach and our architecture. Right, and, and these are paying customers, right? They're absolutely paying that's customers. That's yeah. beautiful. Now, if we look at, you know, there's a lot of talk, you know, so much hype regarding SDN WAN and uh, some of the things on SDN, but we got involved with some research where we actually engage with some carriers, telcos, right? And one of the things we found out, some of the mistake they're making, is they're taking this purpose-built box and saying, let me create a virtualized version and say, hey, look, I'm virtualized, right? Uh, and, but when we look at the economics, they're finding out it's very little to gain. And in some cases, it's worse. They're increasing their OpEx cost. Right. So this whole idea of having a silo box, dedicated box, to a silo virtualization thing it's not working and it's not acceptable. People need to think of how to remove that concept. Is that something with the hype of SDN WAN that you're seeing? Or? You know, we couldn't agree more, Ray. Yeah. Um, what we are finding out in the market, while the SDN hype is cleared, mm -hmm. uh, while there is clarity on what SDN can do in terms of network automation, what we see is we see these islands of automation being created, whether yeah. they're in the data center, where it's a mono hypervisor based automation and overlay technology right. that's just doing automation for that piece and that right. component of it. Okay. There's one in you know in the OpenStack side and, and then there is SD WAN where there is a lot of discussion and a lot of interest these days. Right. But what we are seeing in the market is there are SD WAN vendors right. that are looking at automating VPN branch connectivity mm -hmm. over private and uh, 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 internet. internet right, yeah. However, what they have and what we are starting to realize and there is clarity is it's not uh, another software repackaged okay. as a virtual machine. Right. It's not uh, another van opt device that is evolved and being called as DVAN. Right. It's not another branch router mm -hmm. yet proprietary. What it is is yeah. just automation for just that WAN mm -hmm. piece. Right. And that creates silo automated layer, which is what your comment what was. Talking about, right. And that's where we think a really good, strong policy-based architecture mm -hmm. that allows for really the user-to-user -user connectivity right. okay. and user-to-application connectivity. Okay. Yeah. Because it is about connecting hyper-distributed users mm -hmm. to applications in right. the private data center right. or in the public data center. Right. And that's where the true value of network automation comes in. Right, I see. And, and you know, this is where I can show you on the whiteboard yeah, a little actually bit. actually, that, that you're always good with the whiteboard, so let's just do it in the whiteboard. Yeah, that sounds really good. Okay. So speaking of islands of automation, let me just show this to you on the whiteboard, Ray. What we have is in the private data centers, you have typically virtual machines, containers, bare metal servers, with ESXi hypervisor, you also have, and a lot of enterprises are looking at, having KVM is the hypervisor, and up and coming is Hyper-V, we are starting to see that as well. These are the technologies that exist, and the workloads that exist in the data centers, virtual machines, containers, and bare metal servers. What we are finding is, the SDN solutions are mono hypervisor. So they create an overlay, a network virtualization overlay, overlay one, overlay two, but it only addresses the mono hypervisor. Hardly ever does it go across, and let alone go across even the different workloads. And these days, there's a ton of talk with regards to SD-WAN. And the SD-WAN vendors in this category are talking about providing and connecting users to users that are on net over private IP or off net 
over internet. So locations, branch one, headquarter one, uh, partner or kiosk locations that are spread over these are connected together. The problem, of course, is that it's only connecting users to users. And then finally, there's really a question mark when it comes to accessing workloads in the public cloud, whether it's AWS, GCE, or Azure cloud. So what you have is you have this situation where you have a silo automation layer, SDN in the data center, a silo SD-WAN layer, and then some sort of a connectivity technology that's broken to burst into public cloud. So what's the whole idea? The whole idea here is really about moving up the chain and connecting users to users and users to applications, whether they're in private clouds or in public cloud. And that's really the high order bid that we as an industry need to solve. And what we have done with a solid architecture that has a declarative policy engine and has a SDN controller that's proven technology based on our routing uh, platform, we are able to provide and connect workloads in all different disparate environments, whether it's ESXi, whether it's KVM, whether it's Hyper-V, and to any user locations anywhere in on-net or off-net, as well as burst into public cloud through a declarative policy mechanism that allows us to now create service overlays. Very important, service overlays that span all the way from any user location to workloads in and applications in private and public cloud and that cover any application and any workload, virtualized containers and bare metal servers. No, oh, that's interesting. I mean, this is good because it helps validate the point about the silo mentality. All right, why don't we just go back and just finish off uh, talking there. Sounds good. You know, Sunil, that was really a good job on the whiteboard you did Thank over you. there. You know, it really gave a clarification and validation of the same things we see in the market about silo mentalities lead to silo solutions. That's right. And there's and there's very little to gain. Now, now that we talked about that, right, do you have any real use cases that you're able to elaborate on? Yeah, definitely. There's a few customers I can talk about that are already deployed this in production. Right. Um, there's an ISP in APAC called My Republic. What they have done is they've launched this and it's really disrupting that market mm -hmm. um, because the footprint that they can have with a solution like VNS yeah. uh, is to go anywhere, boundaryless. Right. As a result, what they're doing is they're offering a branch VPN connectivity service mm -hmm. that is on demand right. uh, for their users right. in four markets in APAC. Nice. So that's one example. The other right. example is how do you enhance your existing IPVPN service? So, so there's a operator in North America that is using our technology to now offer enterprise customers the ability to bring in locations that are off net, that are not in the service provider footprint, if you will, right. but then connect them to their existing IP MPLS right. VPN service. And the reason they can do that is because our technology right. allows for that seamless connectivity and is not creating an island. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the third uh, example is about a bank mm -hmm. in Europe that is using this technology to serve their users, mm -hmm. to connect their users to the applications in right. private cloud, okay. as well as some workloads in the public cloud, mm -hmm. but also be able to bring up on demand some kiosk locations and right. temporary locations uh, for credit card and such transactions right, okay. onto that network securely with a nice. consistent experience, always on demand. And then the final example is an oil company in North America mm -hmm. that is using the technology to connect their rigs, mm -hmm. oil rigs, as okay. well as their offices. Right. Again, same concept, connect the offices yep. together, uh -huh. but also to the applications that are in the private nice. cloud nice. seamlessly okay. through a consistent uh, solution from us. Right. Yeah, no, that's great to see that it's gone from PLCs and stuff like that to actual deployments. Real deployments. Now, uh, I mean, in, in, in closing, looking at some of this transition, you're addressing this big problem that I see in the industry. Uh, what's next, I guess, for you? I mean, let's close with that. Okay. Yes. Um, 
as we have participated in more deployments, mm -hmm. as we have seen more use cases, one thing that has become clear is the capability that we have mm -hmm. inherently lends itself okay. to two things. Right. One, the visibility mm -hmm. in terms of what is going on in the network. Right. And two, because we are able to very quickly and mm -hmm. securely and consistently, right. in an error-free fashion, create these overlays, expand, right. contract mm -hmm. them, right. it creates a certain application isolation. Right. Right. Nice. which is very interesting mm -hmm. in terms of micro segmentation but not just micro segmentation in terms of being able to then allow for service insertion of firewall of or of yeah. other appliances yeah. very quickly dynamically and finally it's about then being able to react based on a threat yeah. that's detected yeah and how do you prevent malware Right. Uh, spread mm -hmm. by very quickly doing something to quarantine the workload. Right. So those are the things that you will see yeah. in terms of us expanding our yeah. offer yeah, no, and good, yeah. all to connect users to applications to bring IT aligned with business needs. Yeah. No, I mean, I think what I like about that is you're not doing technology for technology's sake, right? You're, you're mapping the technology to business initiatives that are imperative to the company. Absolutely. Well, you're officially off the hot seat. Thank you, Ray. Welcome. Appreciate it. With Sunil, this is Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this edition of the Hot Seat.